Hi and welcome to this video on how to create this simple timer using C Sharp inside of Visual Studio. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is create a new project inside of Visual Studio. The type of project you're going to want to create is a Windows Farm app, which can be found right here if you've got the C Sharp language selected. Now I'm going to be using a template for this tutorial because I already have a farm set out the way I want. And I'll get back to you once Visual Studio loads up. Okay, now that Visual Studio is loaded up, you'll be greeted for a screen that looks a lot like this. The only difference being that I have my template form in the background, while you guys will have the default form. So the next step is to add all the elements on the form that we're going to be using for this tutorial. The only thing you will need to add is five labels and one button. You can find all of these inside of the toolbox. Open the toolbox and then just search a want. So for the label, start typing label and you will find it here. You can double click or you can click and drag to add the element. And also same for the button. Start typing button and you will find it there double click or drag and drop as well. So I'm going to quickly set the form of the way I want it for this tutorial and then I'll get back to you. So as you've just seen, I've just quickly went ahead and designed the form so it looks the way I want for the project. All I did hit, all I did to do that was click on the elements, go inside of each one's properties and change them around so they look the way I want them to look. Now there's one thing I didn't do, which you should definitely do when creating things, is to label each thing, give it a new name so you can identify it later in code more easier. So for this project, these two here are for representing the minutes and these two here are going to be representing the seconds of the timer. So I want to make it easy identifying the code. So I'll click on the minute ones and then I will change the name of them to lbl min 2 because that represents 10 minutes and I will go in here and I will change it to lb, lbl min 1 because that will represent the 1 minutes and then I'll do the same things for the second labels change it to lbl sec 2 and I will then change this one to lbl Deck one. Now the only other thing we have to do before we start is to add in a timer to the form. To do this just go again into the toolbox, type in timer and you'll find it there. Just drag and drop it. Oh, that was an act oh there we go. So when you've added the timer you will see that it doesn't actually appear on the form, it appears just under the form here. That's because it's a non-visible element. And then over in the properties window, we will be able to see enabled and interval. These are the two properties that we are going to be using for this project. So enabled means whether the timer will be ticking or not. It defaults at false, which is fine because we'll change that with the start button to true later on. And then we have interval. This is how many times the timer will activate whatever bit of code has been set to it. So right now it's at 100. Now this is in milliseconds, so this means it will trigger every, uh, every tenth of a second which is no good for this because right now we're only representing seconds so add another zero on here and that means the timer will take every single second which is great so the first thing we're going to do is add a click event onto this button here you can do that simply just by double clicking the button and what we want to do is type in timer one dot enabled equals true oh. And now whenever we click this button, any code that is connected to the timer will activate. So to actually get the clock up and running, we just wanna double click on the timer. This will create a event for the timer, which means every time a second is passed, the timer will activate any code that is inside of this block. So the first thing we're gonna do is go just outside of this block where the new timer tick event is being created. And we're gonna create four integers. Each one will be for the labels that we've just added into the form. So we'll have one for the seconds and we'll have that equal to zero. We'll have one for the other second label. We'll have that equal to zero. We'll call this also second two because it's the second variable for it. And then we'll do the same thing for the minutes. So bin equals zero and int bin two equals zero. There we go. These are the only variables that we'll be needing. Now what we want to do is we need the timer to start counting. So to do this, we're going to get the first second variable and we're going to do plus plus. This means that this will increase in value every single second by one. Once this has done that, we will get the second label that we created. So LBL second one, and then we'll change the text by typing in dot text. And then we'll have it set to the value of 
this. Now to do that, because the second is an integer, we'll do sec dot to string, and that will convert the value of this to a string, which can then be used inside of the label. Now, if we load up the form up here, and now I click start, this should start increasing by one every single second, just like that, which is great. Now, I've just noticed that the two dots in the middle must be getting covered by something as they're not appearing on the form itself. So back into the code. So right now, only the first label is getting updated and that will continue counting on forever and ever and ever, which is not quite what we want. So we want to check to see if that has counted 10 seconds so we can increment the next label. So we will check if the second is equal to 10 seconds, which means 10 seconds is passed. Create a block. And then if 10 seconds is passed, we are going to want to reset the second value and we're also going to want to reset the label value. So by copying and pasting that top line in here, we can reset the second value to zero and that will then set the label back to zero. Doing that, we'll also need to increase the second second value. So second two plus plus, and then we can copy and paste this bit of code under the change the second label. Now, once 10 seconds has passed, we should find that the next label will increment up. There is one little error inside of this code, which I've spotted there. I need to change this to the sec2 value. So now after 10 seconds has passed, the value should increase. And there we go, it's working perfectly. Now the next thing we need to do is once a minute has passed, we need to increment the minute variable. So the first minute gets shown on top of the timer. So what we want to do is just copy and paste this if statement. We then want to check if second two has a value of six. That'll mean that 60 seconds has passed. Second two will want to be reset to zero and we'll want to update second two's label to reflect that. And now because a minute has passed, we will change the first minute variable. So it gets increased by one. And then we'll make the minute label get updated to reflect that. I will quickly check to make sure that works. And there you go. As you can see, once a minute had passed, the next label got updated. And everything's working fine there. Now, the last thing to do is make this last label update. So the timer can count all the way up to 60. Again, if we just copy and paste this if statement. I want to check if the first minute is equal to 10. And if it is, and a 10 is going to have to be reset to the value of zero. And that label is going to need to be updated to reflect that. And if 10 minutes has passed, minute two needs to be increased and so do their labels. Now I'm going to let this run in the background for a bit just to make sure this works. Actually, there's a quick way to do this. If I just have it set to if minute 10 is equal to one, then I'll quickly reset. Saves time waiting around 10 minutes to see if one label will update. And there you go. We can see that once a minute had passed and that label had been updated to one, everything quickly went down in the next if statement, the label was set to zero and the second minute label was updated. So that is effectively the time of finish, but there are a few little things we can do to make it just a little bit better. The first of those things is we can add in a second button. So as you can see, I've just quickly added in a second button and called it reset. So in reset, it's going to do exactly what you think. It's going to reset all of the labels back to zero, zero. And it's also going to have to stop the timer. So the first thing we want to do is timer one dot enable equals false to stop the count from ticking up. And then we'll just take all the values and we'll set them to zero. So just by doing that, label dot text equals zero and do that for all the labels that we added. And we also want to reset all of the integer values to zero as well. Now, when we start the timer, we'll also be able to reset the timer. The T is obviously being cut off there. 
and clicking that button will now stop the timer and reset everything back to zero. The last thing that we are going to want to do is this timer can only obviously count up to an hour. So if this time was to run, we will want it to freeze once it hits one hour. So to do this, we'll just check to see if minute two has reached 60. And if it is, we will want the timer dot enable to equal false. And that will effectively stop the timer once 60 minutes has passed. And that does it for how to create a simple timer using C Sharp in Visual Studio. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.